vertex groups are extremely influential when it comes to lots of different things within Blender. In this video, I'm going to go through the different uses of vertex groups with different examples so you can understand how to use them in your projects. If you like what I do, then check out the links in the description to all my courses and other useful YouTube playlists on this channel. So to understand vertex groups and their importance, let's start with an object that has a nice lot of vertices. So the default cube isn't great for this, so I'll delete that and shift A to add, mesh, and then monkey. I'll zoom in on that and go into edit mode. So in order to show off what vertex groups can do, let's select some vertices and do something to them. I'll go to side view with three, Alt Z to go to X-ray mode and Alt A to deselect all. Then control right click to lasso select these vertices at the back. So you can see I've got all the vertices at the back and what I want to do is just hide them. So I press Alt Z, obviously I can press H to hide and that's a nice easy way of doing it, but there's also a modifier that does that. So I'll undo that and come across to the modifiers, add modifier and type in mask. Masks are really useful for hiding vertices or showing certain parts of your model. So I'll click on mask and you can see if I bring this out, it's got the option of a vertex group and lots of modifiers have vertex group options. So the modifier just affects those vertices and I'll show you what that looks like. In order to create a vertex group, we go down to the object data properties at the bottom here. You can see vertex groups at the top and I can add a new vertex group over on the side here. So I click the plus icon and that's added a new group. I'll double click on this and call this group hidden and then I'll assign the selected vertices to this group. So hit assign. Now when I go across to the modifier, I'm just going to jump to object mode so we'll see the results. If I choose the vertex group hidden, you'll see that it hides anything but this vertex group but we do have an option to flip it around here or invert it with this button at the end here which again is often available when you're using vertex groups so i've got the right part hidden now so a simple use of vertex groups there just to hide parts of the mesh in this example i want to shrink wrap this cube to the sphere but i only want this side to stick to it so what we'll need to do is create a vertex group for the front of the cube here so only that sticks to the sphere. You might want to have a quick go at that yourself to see if you understand vertex groups now. If not, follow along with me. So first things first, we probably want a few more vertices so this conforms to the shape. So I'll go into edit mode and I'll right click and subdivide. And let's just go to our subdivision properties here. And I'll just do that, let's say three times. So we'll have a little bit of conforming going on here. Now I want to get just these vertices at the edge here. So let's select those, make sure I haven't got anything else selected. And that's going to be my vertex group that does the sticking. So let's go down to the object data properties. Let's just bring this out, add a new group, and I'll call this sticky and assign those vertices. Next, I'll go to the modifier, add modifier and type in shrink. So there's the shrink wrap there and I'll add that. Now the target object is the sphere and you can kind of see stuff happening there. You can press the on cage option to see the results, but all my vertices at the moment are shrink wrapping or sticking to the sphere. But let's bring this out slightly. At the bottom, we've got vertex groups and I can choose the sticky vertex group and only those are sticking now. And if I choose the project option here, I can actually constrain it just to the Y axis and it kind of works how I was hoping. So we've got these vertices sticking to our sphere and these ones not. So that's another example of using vertex groups with modifiers. Now in this example, I've got just a plane, but if I go into edit mode, you can see it's got lots of vertices. So I've subdivided it a few times and I can select vertices and I could add them to a vertex group here. But there is another way. If I go up to my modes at the top here and choose weight painting, I can actually paint on weights. Now you've got your brush properties at the top here. Radius is obviously the size of the brush. Strength is the strength of the brush. However, that's a touch confusing because you've also got weight over here. So weight is the amount it's kind of involved in that vertex group. So if I start painting now, you can see it paints different colors. The red is one or a weight of one and it fades off into dark blue, which is a weight of zero. And you get these colors in between, yellow, green, and light blue, which are obviously the in between values. So you can actually have vertices that aren't fully in this group. Now to show this, let's go to the particle systems. And yes, you can do this with nodes as well. It's just a little bit quicker with particles. I'll add a new particle system, choose hair, and you can see the hair on my cube just here. I'll bring the hair length down so we can kind of see the ends of it. But if I scroll down in this particle system, we can go to vertex groups. And for the density, I can choose this new group I've created and the hair will only appear in those areas. But also the density of the hair will be more where it's one in the red and less 
as it goes to the outside and fades into this dark blue color. I'll illustrate that by going onto the children and turning on interpolated, that will add loads more. But you can see on the outside, it thins out. That's where these vertices have much less weight. So weight is important to vertex groups as well. And if I start painting over here, you can see I can add some more hair and it's more dense in the middle and less dense on the outside. So vertex groups can be painted on and they can have values of less than one. In in this example, I've got my anime character from the course where I show you exactly how to make this link in the description. And of course, there's links to other brilliant, amazing courses and some other playlists on this channel that you might find useful. Now for this, if I turn my overlays on, you can see the character has an armature or a skeleton and I can then select the skeleton and move areas around. The reason I can move these areas around is that if I jump to my character, which is in different parts, so if I select the body, the boots, the gloves, if I go now to my object data properties and look at the vertex groups at the top here, you can see it has lots of different vertex groups. So you can have multiple vertex groups on an object and each of these vertex groups corresponds to one of the bones in the armature. So let's select the armature first and the boot last by shift selecting. So the boots are the active object. If I go into weight paint now, so control tab is the way you get to this pie menu, weight paint. I can now control shift, left click on a bone, and you can actually see the influence of that bone on this object, the boot. So if I control shift, left click on this one, you can see the vertex groups and the influence they have. So this is thigh dot L just here, and you can see that exact vertex group there. So the thigh dot L bone has full control of this area by using a modifier, which is, if I just minimize these ones, it is the armature modifier. So again, we're using a modifier and it's using vertex groups, but you can't see them here. If we go to the vertex groups, you can see them all here, this bone having an influence on this area. And if I choose this bone, you can see once again, it's got an influence of this area and down we go all the way through. And that's how armatures use Use vertex groups in order to control the vertices of your mesh. So that is why vertex groups are so important in lots of different ways. Hopefully you found this interesting. Any questions then comment below. Also if you want to support me you might consider becoming a member of the channel. I'll be releasing slightly more niche videos and some series on there and hopefully cater to more individual needs. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.